Shalom, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Ka Halal, Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Waha Raka Quidash, double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Also, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying. The Most High, Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, is a balanced power, and anything outside of balance is an abomination unto Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. And when we put forth this doctrine, we bring forth a balance of the Most High. The Most High hates the same way that He loves. The Most High makes alive the same way that He kills. When subscribing to the doctrine of Christianity, they have a false doctrine when it's pertaining to our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, because Christianity only teaches you that the Most High love, love, and loves. But that's not so. The Most High also hates, just like it's a race of people that the Most High love, which is Israel. It's a race of people that the Most High hates, which is Esau, Edom. Now, when putting forth this doctrine that we have, we bring forth balance. Acts 20 and verse 27. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of the Most High. So putting forth all the counsel of the Most High is putting forth the good with the bad. That's a perfect balance. The scripture tells us in the book of Revelation, chapter 10, and verse 8, And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, and said, Go, and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. So this is John of Patmos getting instructions from the angel and the angel is telling john of patmos to come get this little book and this little book is referred to as the bible all right or the holy scriptures it says and i went unto the angel and said unto him give me the little book and he said unto me take it and eat it up so the angel told John to take the scriptures and eat it up. All right. Now, when it says take it and eat it up, that's not literal. Okay. You can't take the scriptures and eat the scriptures literally. No, this is a dark saying for take the scriptures and digest them spiritually. It says, and take it and eat it up and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. All right. So once you receive these scriptures and understand these scriptures, okay, it's going to be what? Tasting good as honey in your mouth. For an example, knowing the names Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai. All right. Knowing that Yahweh Shai is coming back to deliver us out of this hell hole that we're living in here in America. All right. Knowing that we are the true children of the most high those are things that are sweet as honey in our mouths all right but once we uh digest the scriptures all right or eat the scriptures up meaning digest them spiritually okay because your belly represents your mind and once understanding kicks in and the balance of the lord kicks in you understand that two-thirds of our people which may be one of your family members are not going to make it this time around, okay? America shall be destroyed, a place that two-thirds of our people love, okay? Two-thirds of our people don't want to hear what's right. The scripture tells us in the book of Isaiah 30 in verse, verse 8, it says, Now go. Write it before them in a table and note it in a book 
that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, and that's two thirds of our people. Verse 10, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceit. Okay, two thirds of our people, they want you uh, to lie to them and make it sound fly to them. They don't want to hear the truth. Okay, and putting forth the truth is a balance. All right, letting you know that it's a penalty if you don't do this and you will get a reward if you do this. But two thirds of our people tell the seers, which are the prophets, not to prophesy unto them right things, all right, but tell them smooth things, things that they want to hear, not the things that they don't want to hear, okay? Going back to Acts 20 and verse 27, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of the Most High. So by giving an individual, the counsel of the Most High, you're giving him the good and the bad, the bitter and the sweet, okay? Because if you don't give them the bad and just give them the sweet or give them the sweet and not the bad, that's an abomination unto the Most High, which is a false balance. And that doesn't please the Most High, all right? A just weight is the Most High's delight. Once again, pursuing to Proverbs 11 and verse 1, all right? And one of those bitter things that one will understand once they digest this truth is that this truth that we have is not a world-friendly doctrine, all right? Because you have the truth, you're going to be hated for having the truth. Galatians chapter 4. In verse 16, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Okay. And we have made several enemies, mainly two thirds of our people. Why? Because we are putting forth the truth in its purest form. We're putting forth the doctrine of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah, which comes from our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah, Father, which is the Most High, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. And for that, you will be hated. St. John chapter 15 and verse 18. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. So when the world begins to hate you, which they already hate us now secretly, but when it becomes public, think to be in good company because you're in the company with our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah. St. John 15 and 18 again. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Verse 19. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hate of you. That's right, because it is evident that we are not of this world. We are children of the day. Why? Because we comprehend and hold and put forth a doctrine that is not friendly unto this world. Verse 20, it says, remember the word that I said unto you. All right, so once the Holy Spirit came upon us, our pure minds was stirred up by the way of remembrance. So the things that Yahweh shot sought with us about 2,000 and some odd years ago has resurfaced. It was um, uh, woken up, all right, due to the Holy Spirit. It says, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant, we being the servants, is not greater than his Lord, Yahweh Shah being the Lord. If they have persecuted me, 
they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. So we know the story when it's concerning our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. He was persecuted. So that's the same footsteps that the servant is going to fall into. If Yahweh Shai was persecuted, the servants shall be persecuted just like Yahweh Shai was. Okay? So we can look forward to persecution coming. All right? It's going to start verbally and it's going to end up um, a physical thing. Okay? It says, but all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake. So all of the persecution is going to come for the name's sake, for the gospel's sake. That's why they're going to hate you. It says, because they know not him that sent me. Why? Because they know not the Most High, whom sent Yahweh Shai. Verse 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sins. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. See that? So, Yahweh Shai, all right, was hated without a cause. Only thing he did was preach the truth. Okay, and we're going to be persecuted for the same very reason for preaching the truth, putting forth the truth. Luke 21 and verse 12, it says, but before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. So Yahweh Shai is telling you, all right, that for my name's sake, you're going to be persecuted. They're going to lay hands on you, all right, to deliver you up to the synagogues. They're going to throw you into prisons, all right? But the scriptures gives us encouraging words if a brother falls into this lot. Revelation 2 in verse 10, it says, fear none of these things. So this is what the scripture is telling us. Fear none of these things, which thou shalt suffer. And Yahweh Shai is explaining the things that we shall suffer. All right, the scripture says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. All right, it says, fear none of these things, which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil which is the physical counterpart of the spiritual being Satan upon earth, which is the wicked elites. The devil shall cast some of you into prison. All right. And that prison is going to come in the form of concentration camps. Okay. It says that ye may be tried. And when you try something, you put fire unto it. All right. And this form of fire is going to be thrown into a concentration camp. All right. It says that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation 10 days. All right. And that 10 days represents two hours, two weeks, two months. It represents a, a period of time. So over a course of period of time, all right, you're going to have tribulation in these prisons, in these concentration camps. It says, be thou faithful unto death. So, if you fall into this lot, the scripture says, be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. All right. Because the scriptures must be fulfilled. All right. Some brothers are going to get persecuted and thrown into these concentration camps. All right. But the scripture encourage any brother. If that be his lot, it says, be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. See that? And all of this is going to happen to those that put forth 
this balanced doctrine, all right? Rightfully uh, divide the word of truth. You're going to get persecuted for it and not loved because it, this is not a world friendly doctrine, all right? But in the time of temptation, which shall come, you're going to be delivered, okay? Because Yahweh Shai, all right, is the deliverer. And the words of the Most High will not return unto him void. All right. The Most High have said that because I have kept the word of my patience, Revelation 3 and 10, because thou has kept the word of my patience. And that's what we're doing. All right. When you go into the word patience, it means to suffer. All right. So we're keeping the word of the most high's patience. Lord willing, we endure unto the end. This is the reward. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. All right. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. All right. And that ultimate hour of temptation, okay, is going to be when the most high put the spirit upon Esau to bring forth his agenda. All right, which is to see hip everybody, and through him see hipping everybody, that's gonna elevate into the new world order. Okay, but the Most High, through Yahweh Shai, is gonna keep us from that. Okay, as long as we endure, as long as we keep up our end of the bargain, which is enduring, the Most High is gonna reward us for enduring. All right, but through balance, we know that this is not a world-friendly doctrine. Why? Because we must put forth the good and the bad. And by us putting forth that balance, we're going to be hated. Lord willing, I pray that this made sense and that this was edifying. Shalom, DTA.